Hi, in this video we're going to look at media queries. I have another video on some basic media queries and in this example we're going to look at an alternative technique. What's going to happen in this one is similar. Whereas we have a, a widescreen version with three columns and as we start to scale down and get smaller and in this case we're still changing the background so that we can see that our style sheet is picking up the change but the image has been scaled to be a, an entirely separate image so that it will fit on the screen and then when we go down to an even smaller size and change to a single column then we change it to yet a different image. So rather than scaling the image to be smaller each time, which sometimes doesn't always do the image justice, it, get, it can look a little jagged in the edges because it's not scaled for that size. And um, also you might have a different version of the image like we have here for like what would you see in a mobile device so that as it gets smaller we can replace it with a smaller version of a larger image so we can target exactly what we want it to look like on different size devices. So we'll look at how we go about getting that effect. Now there are some sample files and there's a link for it in the description but I want to point out that what we're working with in here um, these files, this is our HTML file, we're going to have a single CSS file that's going to have all of our styles for the wide and the medium and the small version screen size. But then we also have different versions of the graphics. So we have one for uh, the normal wide size, then there's one for the medium size screen, and then there's one for the small mobile device screen. So in our style sheet, we're going to have it change to one of these images based on what the screen width is. So let's, I'm going to open up the code for this. And let me start with the HTML. Now the HTML is also set up with a viewport, which I talked about in the other video. Um, we have a link to allstyles.css, so this is a standard link out to an external style sheet. Now one slight change that we have in here is we have the header division, and in the header division before we had an image tag, and instead of an image tag, we're going to use a background image in our uh, style for our header section. So we'll be able to dynamically change what image displays in this header section based on the size of the screen. So now the all styles CSS file starting out here. Um, some basic style setup in here. And I have a comment in here for this first part is going to be for screens that are going to be larger than 801 pixels wide. Now this is just a comment. This isn't making anything happen. If you open up in to the HTML file in the browser and look at what our starting HTML page looks like, this is what it starts out as. So we don't even have our header section with the green background showing, even though it is set up in the style sheet to look that way. So we have the header section with the background color green. But since there isn't any content in the header section, right, if you go back to the HTML file, there isn't any content inside the header section. So that's why there's no background color or any content showing up inside that division. So what we'll do is we'll style the header section so that it has some content. So let's go in and let's just start out with giving it a height so that 
there's some space that it takes up. So after saving that, I'm going to switch to my browser and refresh. And now we've got a plain green header. And that's just because we gave this division a height attribute. So now to put our logo in, it's just going to be a matter of putting in the background image. Okay, so we have background image, the URL for banner wide, PNG. And so if I save and then switch back and refresh it, Okay, the, the logo shows up and now it's starting to repeat because we have extra space in here. So again, we can modify that in our CSS. We can tell it to not repeat. That's new repeat. So now if I save and then refresh it back in the browser, it doesn't repeat. Now if I wanted this to be centered within the logo, which may be um, a design choice that you want to make, we can also go in here and say background position and say center. So again, switching back and testing that out. It helps to spell position, right? And there we have our logo centered as a background image. So right now we don't have anything in here to tell it that this is only good for a certain width. So as we start to get down to this, it's not going to get any narrower because of the size of the image. So we need to modify our style sheet to say that this is the style to use when the width of the browser screen is 801 pixels or more. So back in the code, and this time we're working just in one single style sheet. So I have the comments in here so that I know what this part of the style sheet's going to do. But we use a media query, at sign, media, screen, and we're going to say the minimum width is going to be 801 pixels. And this is the start of the style. So everything that's going to go inside this opening curly brace and the closing one at the bottom here. See this closing one is for the footer section so I need another one to close this media query section. So everything between this closing curly brace and this opening curly brace will be applied by the browser when the screen is at least 801 pixels wide. So now I'm going to save and I'm going to switch back to my browser and I'll refresh. Shouldn't see any changes if the screen's wide enough, but if it starts to get smaller and smaller, once it goes beyond 800 pixels and smaller, then it doesn't have any style to apply, so the header disappears along with the logo that's in there. So we can continue on with styling by making another media query for uh, the next size screen. So we're going to go, right now we're 801 pixels or larger, and we're going to say the next one is going to be, okay, what if our screen goes up to 800 pixels? So I'm going to copy this first line, just so that I don't have to type it again. 
and I'm going to come down here and say in this section styles for screens up to 800 pixels wide. So we're going to say the minimum width of this or instead of actually minimum width, the maximum width because we only want it to go up to 800 pixels wide. So for screens up to 800 pixels wide, it's going to do the style that's between this opening curly brace and this closing curly brace. So now I'm going to just copy some of this content, uh, just the things that are applying, the wrapper, the header and the content section. And I can paste it in between and then modify this to say, okay, what do I want this screen to look like when it goes up to 800 pixels wide? So first what I'm going to change is the min and max width of the screens. What this does, if you're not familiar with it, I'll show you in our screen already. Um, when this goes out to a certain point, and mine's going past the, um, the video recording area, but when it gets to a min width, it's going to stop and not let you go past that. And a max width is once it gets to a certain point going wide, then as you keep going wider this will stay and not it'll stay centered on the screen but it won't continue to get wider and wider so a good example will be to work with this in the medium size screen so instead of saying the minimum width is 700 pixels we're going to say it's going to be 400 so resizing the screen we're not going to let it get any smaller than 400 pixels and we're not going to get it let, let it get any wider than say 750. Now those are values that you can play around with depending on what you want it to look like. Let's change the background color to something else so that we can be sure that our style sheet is indeed picking up the changes. And our background image, instead of using the wide image, we have one that has been set up for medium size screen so we'll say banner medium and we'll still keep the no repeat and center and let's change the content so it's two columns wide again so that it is more obvious to us as we're viewing it that we're going from three columns to two columns plus on a smaller screen the content is probably will probably be easier to read in the two column format so I'm going to save this, switch back to my browser, and refresh it. And now as I go from my widescreen version and under 800 pixels should kick in. And you can see here that this isn't getting any smaller because of the min width setting in our style sheet. And now we go to a two column setting. We have our smaller logo displayed for a smaller screen and again when we get to a certain point and keep going in a little bit it stops because of the min width and then once we go smaller than that nothing's happening because we have it set for the smallest So then finally we have to come in here and set up a style for screens up to 480 pixels wide. So what we have is 800 or more pixels from the first style. Second one is a maximum width of 800 pixels. And now we can define one for a smaller screen size and I'm going to just what I'm going to do is copy this whole section and under the comment paste this in and we're going to say now our maximum width is going to be 480 pixels wide 
and we can adjust the min width and max width. So we'll say 200 pixels is the smallest that we want our design to go. And it can go up to 400 pixels wide, Oops, a little too big. And I'm going to adjust the um, padding down just a little bit because this will be a smaller screen size. And again, I'm going to change the background color so that it's more obvious that this is being changed based on the width of the screen. And we have the small image. So a completely different redesigned version of the small image. Now for column count, we'll override this just to make sure that it does change it back to one column. And since we only have one column, we don't have to worry about a column gap. Okay, so I'm going to save and switch back to my browser and refresh. And so now as I go, we have our greater than 801 pixels up to 800 pixels. And then when it gets smaller than that, we have our medium size screen with our medium logo. And then as we get to our smaller size, we have it scaling down to a minimum of 200 pixels wide with our optimized image for a small device displayed as opposed to our medium or large device. So that's an example of another way of using media queries along with um, style sheets in order to be able to adjust the width of your screen based on uh, the size of what the user is using to display in their web browser.